fuel is still so goddamn high. Two dollar redos for a litre. Precisely the reason why I didn't go to class yesterday. Uh. And I studied from home. This fuel is just ludicrous at the moment. Not to mention my bike is a bit of a thirsty little the only downside is my class today is on the other side of the campus in comparison to uh, where the parking lot is for me. I need to need to probably spend a little time having a look around that end because if I can park somewhere closer and it's free, because usually bikes are free, it make life a lot easier for me. But oh well. Yeah, so, I have exactly nothing to talk about when it comes to content today. It's just literally me going to class and recording for my own, you know, safety and stuff and things. Because last week, oh yeah, last weekend I nearly got freaking taken out at this roundabout coming up here. Typical car driver not looking right because you know roundabouts give way to your right that's how it works but no nope, didn't look just freaking rolled into my lane and i had to merge in front of a pull well i think she was a pea plate or just recently on red peas i think yeah red peas and she just got spooked because i had to freaking dart into her lane like literally dodge right to avoid getting well running into the tail end of that stupid muppet Pretty sure that was the last video that I did, so that'll come up on the channel. Yeah, this roundabout. And car people are just a different breed. Just a different breed. Always doing stuff to the detriment of others but for their own damn convenience and then they have the nerve to ask why do bikers always go fast well we go fast so we don't have to deal with stupid erratic car driving behaviors that shit whack 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 Britain being 10.30 busy dip dodge duck and dive yeah I can't wait for this all this construction to be over with I think it's uh, four lanes going each way. Hopefully it fixes a congestion issue. But my pet peeve right now with the government, or well, the local government, about this part of the highway is, um, yeah, you can widen these roads as much as you bloody want. But that's not the issue. The issue is this bottleneck bridge coming up. Because previously it was just a two-lane bridge. Now I'm not sure what their plan is. Because they haven't... I don't know if they haven't announced or... Made their plans public or what. But I know that they're obviously widening the bridge as such. Which is good. Hopefully it's a four-lane bridge. Because that'll help with congestion not hard a lot. But I'm not too certain how they're planning on doing that because this on-ramp coming up, on and off-ramp would probably cause a lot of, um, yeah, issues with uh, having it a four-laner. It might be a four-laner, like these four lanes going that way and I'm guessing those four lanes go on the other way. And then the other predicament that they'll run into is essentially this bit coming up. Because you're going four lane, four lane, four lane, and then you drop down to two lanes over here. So it's just like 
you're just moving the bottleneck from one choke point to the other I guess they're working on something over here but I doubt it's anything to do with widening the lanes but oh well you know how the government is loves wasting taxpayers money on stupid shit and redoing it umpteen amount of times just to you know fix a quite a simple issue that they could solve with a little bit of foresight and planning but you know government wanting things done right here right now not giving the planners enough time to actually do their damn jobs ba -da -ba -ba -ba. gotta love that shit now I don't understand why trucks that go slow love holding position in a fast lane especially when it's a hundred kilometers an hour around here it's like brother you get into the fast lane and then you slow it down. What are you doing in my lane? Gloves are pretty good. They're old. They've done me well. It's just for summer. It just gets very clammy because it doesn't breathe too well. Like it is perforated a little bit around here where the palm is, but. Yeah, it's not enough. I think it's just the leather and the, its ability to retain the heat and moisture that makes um, makes it uncomfortable. And the issue isn't so much my left hand, because left hand I can just do that and have it dry out. The issue is my right hand essentially because I'm always on the throttle and because of no cruise control, I can't exactly, like this is the best I can do is clutch in and do that. That's, that's the extent of it essentially. But on the way home, I'm probably going to need to fuel up and most definitely need to check my tyre pressures because I kind of felt it a little bit soft. I don't know if it's just because I had it sitting, well, I didn't use it yesterday or the day before, that um, it's uh, essentially maybe the compound just turned a little soft and it just needs to be run in a little bit to heat back up. I mean it could be that, but also I need to double check the tyre pressure because I haven't done it in a bit in a hot second but yeah people on motorcycles are getting into motorcycles big big thing as to how efficient your vehicle is going to be especially when it comes to fuel efficiency is yes one what like for example if your bike has rider modes and engine control on how much power it outputs obviously if you're using it for commuting turn that shit all the way down Make sure you, your brakes are taken care of. That's a big thing because you don't want brake fade. Or dirty brakes or all brakes. Because if it's just constantly pressing against the uh, brake disc, you're gonna, well, create more brake fade and eventually damage the rotor or the brake disc itself. And another big thing is uh, tire pressure. Because tire pressure is a big, big thing as to how easy your vehicle rolls. Because obviously if it's too flat, the head obviously is going to use a little bit more power out of the engine to move it. Therefore, more drain essentially. So, it's a balancing act because you don't want to be too pumped up. Because then that means you, any small bump or pothole or anything remotely sharp could end up popping it so it's a balancing act between keeping it just soft enough but also just hard enough to keep keep it rolling best thing to do is check the tire wall of your well, tires to essentially see what the optimum psi is but also got to realize uh the place where you live your climate will also affect how tires behave for example in australia or at least where i live it gets very very hot so, do, yeah, don't go putting the tire pressure too close to the maximum because air expands, hot air expands. And if you put it at the max, obviously when you're riding, it'll obviously heat up and expand. You'll be pushing a higher PSI than it's, the, well, the tire is safe to do so, essentially. So you're essentially causing it to fail, essentially. So be very aware of that. But yeah, make sure your oils are all good. Not like me right now, I need to get my oils changed because it's getting a little bit on the dirty side.
that's a nice Lancer. Nice.